Every FPS player wishes that they were an aim god, but very few people ever actually reach that status. So what does it take to make that happen? Does it rely on good genetics? Or are there advanced tactics for improving your aim that could help anyone achieve insane aiming skills? Well, when asking myself these sorts of questions, I thought of no one better to answer them than the FBS coach himself, Ron Rambo Kim. You see, after years of flying Counter-Strike professionally, followed by years of coaching top teams like Complexity, Cloud9, and MVP, Ron has accumulated a wealth of FPS knowledge and aiming skill. And so, by defining key aspects of aiming, teaching you the mindset needed to improve, and implementing an advanced perspective on how to play at your maximum ability, you just might end up on the fast track for developing insane aiming skills, and getting you one step closer to that status of an aim god. Before diving too far into the principles for improving your aim, it's important to note that aim is only one of several vital aspects when it comes to FPS skills, and any good FPS coach, including Ron, will tell you this. Basically, aiming mechanics alone cannot carry you to the top. You need to combine them with great game sense and positioning to unlock its potential. Now, fortunately, having better aim can help you to improve these other aspects a lot faster. The more you can rely on your aim, the less you'll need to focus on it and the more free your mind will become to focus on other aspects of the game. And as you become more confident and consistent with your aim, you'll become far more confident and flexible with your playstyle, able to experiment and try new things. So. As you embark on your aim training journey, keep this in the back of your mind. Actively improve your aim alongside the other key skills like positioning, map awareness, decision making, and so on. So with that being said, what is the best tool to improve your aim? Well, I'm sure that most FPS players, including yourself, are very familiar with aim trainers, but there are still a lot of arguments as to whether they are really that useful. You see, many pros of the past got to where they are without them. So should you really be using them? Well, as an ex-professional Counter-Strike player who grew up before aim trainers were around, I thought it was worth it to get Ron's opinion on the matter. So when they go in a game, it's like, well, when I'm playing, you're not really practicing your aim, you're practicing playing the game. So you build your game sense, but you, you know, how much aim training are you getting if you're just like walking around a map, not seeing anything and, there may be 10, 15 seconds where you're just holding an angle and, and there's nothing happening. So there's an aim trainer, you could, in a minute, you're flicking and shooting 80, 90 times. So you get this like instant feedback, you see where you're missing and stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's the advantage. So for any of you guys who have taken our eSports Elite course, you'll already understand the value of frequency. And this is what Ron is doubling down on here. And for this reason, aim trainers cannot be overlooked. So, if you've hesitated to use aim trainers in the past, wondering if they are really worth your time, then take notes, because they can provide a significant advantage for you, not only as a warm-up tool, but as a method for actively improving your skills. But just by using aim labs, Kovacs, or any other aim trainer, you won't become an instant aim god. And so, I wanted to figure out the different factors that usually hold players back from getting good aim. Now, when thinking deeply about this problem, it's common for many players to just chalk it up for genetics. And quite honestly, they do this for good reason. Let's say that you and your best friends both start playing a brand new FPS game and have each never really played with a mouse and keyboard in the past. Now, chances are you will both suck at aiming. But let's say for some reason your friend has a better baseline reaction time or quicker hands than you, which allows them to do better. Now, it's easy to label this as a genetic advantage and assume that they will always be a little bit better than you. And this is what we usually think, but it's also a flawed assumption. In reality, a head start does not mean that they will always have an advantage. In fact, the factor that really predicts improvements is your mindset. I think, um... 
I mean, how much time and thought you put into something too will impact your improvement rate. So someone is the most important thing to them is getting good at aiming. They'll figure out a way. They'll put the hours in and they'll 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 put all that problem solving and brain focus and energy into it. Um, where other people are just casual. There's not, you know, it's not a big thing. They just want to play. So yeah, they're not going to get that return. So. So as much as it's easy to label mechanical skill as a natural born talent, it's far more empowering to know that with a complete commitment to aim training, you're able to see a massive improvement in your skill. But of course, this result doesn't come with just a casual mindset. It requires that you commit yourself wholeheartedly. You must be willing to not only invest the time, but creatively think about how you can push your skills much further. So consider if you have been casually approaching your aiming skills or if you really are dedicated to improving. This mindset shift in itself is the first step to making breakthroughs in your skill development. But this is where we start to run into another issue. Motivation is kind of like a mushroom in Mario Kart. It gives you a nice boost forward. But what happens if you're giving yourself a boost in the wrong direction? In other words, you might have the motivation and drive to improve. You might be putting in the efforts and the time, but you're not making progress. And the reason that this is likely true is that you're not training the right type of aim. Now, in general, we can define aim as your level of control over the mouse. As you play the game and play aim trainers, your brain naturally learns how much muscular contraction is needed in your hands, wrist, and arm to move the mouse to the appropriate spot on the mouse pad, and thus the proper place on the screen. But to train the right parts of your overall aiming skill, we first need to break it down into sub-skills. I like to think about it in distances. So if you're aiming just a, a small box around the crosshair, uh, it's what I call micro motion. So there's not much wrist or elbow or forearm involved, but just more of your hands and fingers, like precision stuff. And then beyond those micro box, it'd be what I call flicking. Um, so just gradually building out um, from distances. So if you do 180s and stuff, it's what I call swiping, because you start up to now you have to aim beyond your wrist flex, so you're using your forearm and elbow. Um, and then there's vertical motion. So when you aim up and down, it's completely different biomechanics compared to flicking or swiping, uh, which is naturally anatomically easier, like going left to right than is up and down, like shifting the whole elbow. So using distances and biomechanics needed for those distances, we can better understand aiming. With Ron's breakdown, we have micro motions or finger aiming, flicking, which is a lot more wrist aiming, swiping, which involves forearm and elbow, and then we also have vertical aiming, which requires shifting the whole arm up and down. Now, which of these types of aiming should you be training? Well, it depends on the game that you play and your playstyle within it. For example, with games like Fortnite, Overwatch, and arena shooters like Quake, you will have a decent amount of vertical motion. But with games like Valorant and CSGO, you'll have far less of it, making that aspect of aim training much less important. And then you need to consider your playstyle. How close are you to the enemies when you're engaging them? If you are a close combat flanker, you may rely a lot on flicking and swiping skills. But if you are a far range click timing player like a sniper, you may depend more on precision and finger aiming. And then of course, you also have to consider your sensitivity. With high enough sensitivity, you'll rely a lot more on small wrist flicks and finger movements. And with lower sensitivity, you'll spend more time with wide flicks and wide swipes. So, as you play your game of choice, start paying attention to which aspects of aim you rely on the most, and of course, which ones you rely on the least. In fact, take the time to rank these four main types of aiming in order of importance for you personally. Now, this is where I started to ask Ron about more advanced tips and advanced advice. But as a quick side note, if you guys want to improve your skills a lot faster, I highly recommend our Esports Elite course and coaching programs. In there, we break down the science and advanced tactics on how to improve your mechanics a lot faster, far beyond any of our YouTube videos. So if you're curious for more information, stick around to the end of the video or check out the link in the description. 
Now, while some people in the aim training community use crazy tactics to improve their aim, like sensitivity randomizers, metronomes, or rhythm games, I wanted to hear what unique ideas Ron had up his sleeve. Now, while he didn't end up touching on these other interesting tactics, he did point out a factor of aiming that is far more important. Most things that people are overlooking is how influential their body positions are or their body alignments are. Figure out, hey, well, I'm making certain misses to the right a little bit. Why is that? Like, it's happening every time. Well, if I angle my form a little bit, differently or position it might it's going to shift the entire rotation the angles of um so that might be a quick fix you know in a game where in fps games where precision is everything and you know mi missing by five ten pixels is, is kill or death every time that two inches throws off all your alignments and your angles and your feelings so um, yeah makes a huge difference now think about that for a moment in a game where being off by a few pixels can make the difference between winning and losing how important do you think your body and arms positioning are sitting just a few centimeters back positioning your shoulder on a different angle than usual or putting the wrong amount of pressure on your mouse can make a huge difference so how can we find the best possible alignments for maximum skill execution? Well, if you analyze the pros, you will start to notice how each of them have relatively unique body alignments that work best for them based on their personal preference, their in-game sensitivity, and their playstyles. So the first thing that you need to do is to experiment. I would say the first thing is experiment with different alignments and positions. Um, how much form is on the table, the angle of the form, there's all kinds of grips, you know, um, claw grips, fingertip grips, overlap, palm grip, um, having different side pressures, um, having the ring finger and the pinky on the side of the mouse, or just the pinky, uh, there's, you know, how high or low you sit, um, how close your chest is to the table, like all these factors, just not even talking about sensitivity or technique, they have a huge influence on you know how you control the mouse um, and the angles that are set um, and how you perform the aiming motions so take on this challenge of experimentation pay close attention to how each aspect of your alignment affects your aim it's very possible that by changing the angle of your arm the grip of your mouse or any other aspects of alignments it may actually complement your play style more than what you're doing right now now, of course, it's also worth mentioning that changing things up and actively paying more conscious attention to yourself while you're aiming will in fact lead to some short-term dips in your abilities. But give yourself some time to adapt and see if those adjustments to your body mechanics end up leading to improved results in the game. Because even just a few days of experimentation might lead to a significant breakthrough in your skills. Now, this leads us to an idea that is a bit more controversial. Once you've found your ideal grip, posture, or body alignments, it's essential to become consistent. If you're not able to consistently set up to your computer every time, the same way every time, to your mouse pad and your mouse, um, if I'm sitting two inches closer than yesterday, again, that throws off everything. And it feels like my sensitivity is different, although it's the same. So say work on that, work on the consistency of those positions and then finding ones that uh, could work for you. There's definitely pro gamers, you can change your sense, you can change your mouth and, mouse and still play fine. Sure. Um, pro players do it all the time, but I think in order to get that true, like you play at 95%, but um, if you wanna get to 100% and if you stay with one thing, stay with one thing and you're to repeat it over and over again, um, it's a small difference that I think matters. So big believer in consistency and, and repetition. Now, why is this a controversial opinion? Well, in the aim training community, there's a hot debate around the term muscle memory. But what really is muscle memory? Well, as we repeat a specific movement, our brain learns how to coordinate our muscles to perform that action. And when that movement is repeated enough times, long-term motor memory is created for that task, allowing it to be performed with less and less conscious effort. For example, think about when you learned how to ride a bike or type on a keyboard or learned how to play an instrument. Now, of course, this makes sense. So why is there a debate around it? 
Well, some players use the term muscle memory to claim why their aim suddenly sucks. For example, they may play with a specific sensitivity for years, then switch it up for just a few weeks. Now, let's say they adapt to the new mechanics for aiming during those few weeks, but then eventually they might decide to switch back at the end of this experiment. Now, of course, it takes a little bit of time to readjust back to the old sensitivity. But let's say that they claim that they can never readjust. They claim that their new sensitivity overrode their brain's ability to use the past sensitivity, and now they are permanently worse off for it. Now, let's dig into the theory and potential science of why this could happen. You see, when we're learning factual information, the brain learns in a very specific way. And the issue that can arise is that when we learn very similar new knowledge that is too similar to past information, it can cause conflicts and even overwrite our memories. So some players assume that our mechanics work in a similar way, causing conflict with their aim. Fortunately, motor learning is much more flexible than factual learning. When you temporarily change your sensitivity, it doesn't delete your brain's ability to use another one. So those who fear muscle memory and assume it will lead to their downfall often claim that consistency is the only way to improve. Now obviously, their fears are not entirely relevant, but nonetheless, their emphasis on consistency still might have some value. Now, Ron is also a big believer in consistency, but not in the way that changing your sensitivity for a few days then switching back will somehow override your skill that you've developed. He in fact knows that changing sensitivity isn't necessarily a detriment to skill. He does note, however, that once you find a grip, position, and posture that works for you, staying consistent with it will help you reach the maximum of your ability, the way that a pro golfer will try to master the mechanics of their personal swing, or a basketball player will try to perfect the mechanics of their signature throw. So ultimately, start to experiment, change things up for a few days, and let your mind adjust to various grips, postures, sensitivities, and arm positions. With enough experimentation, you will begin to fine tune your biomechanics, and eventually you will find what works specifically for you. And when that happens, stick with it and become consistent. As you do this, push yourself to the limits during training. Use drills that are most relevant to the aiming mechanics that you need to develop for your game and your playstyle. When you combine all of this with a mindset of ruthless improvements, you will quickly begin to see results. Now of course, in any FPS game, aiming is not the only skill you need to learn. But as you begin to enhance your aim, you'll begin to unlock more opportunity to grow and learn. You'll become a far more confident player and you'll make it one step closer to the status of an aim god. First off, I just want to give a big shout out to Ron. That guy has such an interesting esports career and so much more wisdom that I couldn't fit into this video. But fortunately, you can see the entire conversation on our second channel. Just check the link in the description in the pinned comments to find it. And I'll also leave links to his channel, his course, and his social media there as well. Now, if you think that this video can make an impact in someone's esports career or help a teammate of yours to reach a higher level of performance, then consider sharing it. If shouting it out on Reddit, Twitter, or Discord helps alter the path of players like you, then it would be pretty damn amazing. And chances are that they won't see it without you sharing it with them. So see what kind of an impact that you can have by spreading this video around. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you have the desire to become a great player or even a pro, but feel like you're wasting your time or improving slowly, then I highly recommend our Esports Elite course. It's designed to teach you how to train like a pro so that you can make a massive improvement in just a few months. And a major part of the course breaks down the science behind how to improve your mechanical skills as fast as possible. The research and advanced ideas go far beyond anything that we have on our YouTube channel. So if you want to improve your mechanical skills and rank up a lot faster, then join now using the link in the description or the link in the pinned comment. 
And of course, don't forget to let me know what you guys thought about this video. I always love reading your comments and connecting kind of one-on-one -on -one with you guys. But of course, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys keep on grinding and keep on improving, and I'll see you all in the next video.